August 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ephesians chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. For he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we may be holy and unblemished in his sight in love. He did this by predestining us to adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, that he has freely bestowed on us in his dearly loved Son. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He did this when he revealed to us the secret of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ toward the administration of the fullness of the times to head up all things in Christ the things in heaven, and the things on earth. In Christ we too have been claimed as God's own possession, since we were predestined according to the one purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, would be to the praise of his glory. And when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed in Christ, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, who is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you spiritual wisdom and revelation in your growing knowledge of him. Since the eyes of your heart have been enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the incomparable greatness of his power towards us who believe as displayed in the exercise of his immense strength. This power he exercised in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above every rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And God put all things under Christ's feet, and he gave him to the church as head over all things. Now the church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. God, many people are familiar with a lot of the different verses in Ephesians um, because we've argued over them <laughs> in, in Bible study, in seminary, amongst ourselves. Um, when you start using words like predestination and elect, people just kind of freak out because we want to understand it. And there's never been a single person in this world who has understood it. Uh, it's just one of those things of you that is higher than us. And trying to reconcile that in our human brain just doesn't work. Um, but one of my favorite parts of Ephesians actually comes in the very beginning of this in Paul's greeting, salutations uh, to those in Ephesus. And he says, For he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world that we may be holy and unblemished in his sight in love. And it's not only just phenomenal that you chose us before you even created the world that you sat down one day and said I think I'm going to make a Janelle and here's what she's going to look like and here's what her life's going to look like and here's what her heart's going to look like and here's the people she's going to meet and here's the situation she's going to go through and here's how she's going to fare it's not just that phenomenal idea that I was important enough to be created by you <laughs> Because I fully realized that I could be not sitting here and somebody else with a different name could have been created instead of me. You actually thought of me and created me. 
But to me, that's not the most amazing part. The most amazing part is you called somebody like me to be holy. You called somebody like me to holiness. Who am I? Who am I that you would call to holiness? I I'm still trying to grasp how over a decade ago you called me to be your child. Out of a life that was just sin and desire and what I wanted, I wanted. It was all about Janelle. And you called me into this amazing life where I get to have a relationship with you. And now we're learning in Ephesians that you've called me to holiness and to be unblemished in love. I think you have me mixed up with somebody else. Because I screw up a lot every day. I try so hard to do your will and to figure out what that looks like. And I get sidetracked. I get into my own kingdom and choose what I want to choose. I, oh gosh, there's just so many reasons why I don't choose the right thing day in and day out. And yet I was created before the worlds were created in your in your process and I was created for holiness and God how crazy awesome that I can't do that that only with you can I be holy only with you can I be unblemished because only with you was I originally created and loved by you See, we keep trying to figure things out on our own. We keep, keep, keep trying to figure out predestination. We keep trying to figure out the elect, uh, salvation, all those things that get churches all riled up. But we don't need to figure things out because it's your world and you already have everything figured out. And you figured out a long time ago that I was going to exist. And you were really clear that I was going to be created for holiness and I would be unblemished in your sight, in love. Now, again, I know that I can't do that. It is impossible for me to do that by myself. But with you, I can work on that every single day. And I can work closer and closer to that perfection that I will never reach, at least in this lifetime. But I know with you and only with you, can I grow in those areas I can work on becoming more holy. I can work on becoming more unblemished. I can make different choices that next day. But only with you. I don't get to figure this out on my own. Because it's not going to work. And I know when I figure this out on my own. I get myself in way more trouble than if I had just left it alone in the first place. Only with you. And I think I know a little bit of the reason why. Not only do you ring sovereign. <laughs> but who else knows me better to teach me how to be holy and unblemished but my God who created me who chose me before the foundations of the worlds were even created who wrote my name in his book my name it says Janelle Elms in your book who else but the God who created my heart and my way of thinking and the world I live in who else but you could teach me how to be these things I also know it's only through the, through you that I will understand what true love really is not a worldly love not a love that has one foot planted in the church, one foot planted in the world, but true love. True love enough to create me and write my name in the book and choose me to be set apart for holiness, your love, and your grace. God, I'm not sure, nor will I ever be, I think. I'm not sure why you chose me. I'm not sure why you created me. 
And some days I'm not sure why I'm here. But I do know what I'm called to be obedient to. I'm called to be obedient to your word. To seek your word, to pray about your word, to seek a relationship with you, and then to seek relationships with other people so I can tell them about you. It's pretty clear what you've called us to do. You haven't called us to argue about predestination. You haven't called us to argue about, well, why should we go out and tell people about God if there's already an elect group of people who are going to be saved? There's nowhere in the Bible you say that. You ask us to be obedient. And God, I ask for strength today to be just a little bit more obedient than I was yesterday so that I can be a little bit closer to the holiness you created me for. I wasn't created for this world. Thank you. I wasn't created for this world. I was created for you. By you. So that I could walk with you. And learn from you. And be guided by you. In your son's holy name. We pray. Amen.